Mm-hmm. Okay, well, how, how did you get into the, the flat earth thing? Well, I was minding my own business one day, just looking at YouTube videos, which I have done for quite some time. I look at YouTube videos the way many of us do, as an entertainment source and as an uh, information source. And so sometimes I use it for one and sometimes I use it for another. Look up a band, a new song, uh, you know, anything involving fashion and beauty. Those have been passions of mine. And then, of course, when something came along that piqued my curiosity, I would look at YouTube videos about it, and that was a lot of conspiracy things. Mm -hmm. A lot of women, they say, aren't interested in conspiracy-oriented topics. I don't find that to be true, but that's what the numbers say, that most people interested in conspiracy are primarily men. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm interested in anything because I know the world in which I live is not is not as they present it to us. And by they, I mean they in quotes that could be many different people and organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't mean anything like reptilian overlords. I mean, (laughs) based in reality, Uh, the people that uh, are what I call the powers that should not be. And um, those those could be people we know the names of and people even higher than them who we don't know the names of, who really, I think, control a lot of what really goes on beyond presidents and chancellors, et cetera, et cetera. But... I was looking at things like 9-11, Boston bombing, Sandy Hook, etc. And it's a rabbit hole that you go down once you look at these things. And it's irresistible, actually, to keep digging further and further and further. And I ended up looking at um, moon landing hoax videos, two in particular. One of them is Something Funny Happened on the Way to the Moon. Bart Sabrell is the one who created that. And also another one of his astronauts gone wild. Both of those got me scratching my head because... At the, this current date of 2017 in November, I'm 54 years old. I'll be 55 in February of 2018. And, um, you know, I grew up with the moon landing. It happened during my lifetime. I just right. believed it was true. I was never researching the moon landing. I just, just, it was a, it was, it was a given, like, you know, water's wet and you know, we breathe oxygen. Right. But, um, you know, upon further examination, which was spurred by watching the astronauts gone wild and funny thing happened on the way to the moon. I determined through, you know, actually quite a lot of research that that never really happened, as we've been told. It wasn't even a space race issue where we pretended to go to the moon because we had to, we had to beat Russia. It was way beyond that uh, to the point where we can't go to the moon. We can't go to any planets because planets aren't things you can land on. And we've been lied to. And, and well, I found another video along that, that way as I was going down the rabbit hole, which was, uh, on the sidebar, a suggested video, Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues. Uh, At the yeah. time, they were individual clues. Uh, now they've been grouped together as one, one I guess you'd call it movie, one video on his Mark Sargent channel. Mm-hmm. But at the time, they were released individually, little bite-sized pieces of information, and I started watching them, and then was not just watching, but devouring them, and hungry for more. And it got me thinking about the world, and how do I know what I know? Why do I believe what I believe? What is belief? And to me, belief is the enemy of truth. We are uh, basically conditioned and programmed from a very young age to believe things about the world in which we live, and we never set about trying to actually prove them. And the scientific method says that nothing is ever set in stone. Everything should be able to be uh, put under the microscope, should be testable and repeatable. So we should be able to test things like this spinning globe, Earth, or gravity, or evolution, or that we went to the moon, or that we have a rover on Mars. We should be able to have proof of these things. I've always thought that if we went to the moon and went back several times and have, you know, done a flyby of Pluto and many other you know, things that are pretty amazing when you think about them. Why don't we have any sort of 24 hour uh, camera on the moon focusing on our home planet Earth? Wouldn't you think we would? I mean, don't you think one of the major soft drink manufacturers like Pepsi or Coke would have a big billboard there? Drink Coke. I I mean, I always thought it would be a laser. Well, exactly. We monetize (laughs) everything. Go to a a sporting event, go anywhere. And and it's just everything is emblazoned with brand names everywhere. We are ruled by money making. Why has no one ever tried to make money off that? Um, It it just makes you scratch your head. But then you write it off because, well, you know, it's crazy. Of course, we went to the moon because the ISS is, you know, in space and it's floating up there and et cetera, et cetera. And then when you think about it, 
hmm, we hear when reading the news or watching TV news that we are, you know, almost at war. We're at other countries' throats and they're at our throats. But yet on the ISS, the International Space Station, all the countries coexist in peace. That seems pretty suspect. I guess that happens at the Olympics too. Yeah, but yeah. It all just seems very mysterious because if we were to get along in in certain areas, we would get along in all areas. So all these things got me thinking and then I came to the conclusion where I am now, which uh, is that we live on a flat, uh, stationary earth, motionless. We are not moving and it is not a globe. And that's that's all there is. What's out? Is there a dome in your view, or? Well, I can't prove a dome, but sure. many things lead me to believe that there may be an enclosure. Some call it a dome. Mm -hmm. Some call it a vault. Some call it a ceiling. Some who are more biblical call it a firmament. But wow. uh, it would make sense to be in a contained environment, because even if you believe we live on a globe like most of us do, like I always did, uh, you are in a contained environment, really. It's the atmosphere, right? And then if a rocket were to go into space, it has to, we've all seen rocket launches or at least rocket launches on video. It goes up and then it goes through the atmosphere where it supposedly gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And then it pops through into the quote unquote vacuum of space. So we all know we're kind of enclosed by that. But with the flat earth, um, there's the aspect of there being something that keeps us safe and enclosed um, from whatever there is out there, if anything. Okay, because, uh, I mean, you mentioned religious, the firmament stuff. Because um, <laughs> I know there's a, there's a town, I forget where it is, Zion City. It's somewhere somewhere in the U.S. It was founded by Flat Earthers. And it's it's kind of been a religious thing up until the last maybe 10, 20 years. Uh, the belief that the earth is flat. Are, are you religious at all? No, I'm not religious, and I didn't know about a town founded by flat earthers at all. Uh, that may, I'm just guessing here, have something to do with a group of people called the Flat Earth Society, yeah. which has nothing to do with myself and all of the rest of my friends and, I guess, um, I don't know, the people I haven't met yet, let's just call them all my friends. People who call <laughs> themselves flat earthers. Right. The modern flat earthers have nothing to do with the flat earth society. So this town in Zion, which I've never heard of before, founded by flat earthers, is something completely not involving anybody like you spoke of earlier. Uh, Eric Dubay or myself or right. you know Mark Sargent, oh, I know you've spoken with. None of us are part of uh, active members. I don't mean active members. We are not pushing anything the Flat Earth Society has to say at all. What, what's your beef with the Flat Earth Society? Well, I don't know how I would be able to prove this to you, but the Flat Earth Society, in my opinion and many other people's opinion, is a website and organization that's set up to look like it's a legitimate thing so that when anybody gets an idea, because they've read something in the news, maybe Hustler Magazine, right. or seen something on TV, heard the president, uh, President Obama mentioned we don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Whatever the case may be, they go look into Flat Earth. The first thing that will come up is the Flat Earth Society. Mm -hmm. Then they go there and say, what's this about? And read what they have to say about the shape of the earth and how it works. And it sounds really, really nuts. And then a person will just click away and write everyone off as a kooky conspirator and move along. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a trap, actually. So... Okay, but that's what you know, I think the from a, society is. From an outside perspective, uh, admittedly uh, novice lay, lay perspective, uh, looking into you know the FAQ and uh, pe what people post on the Flat Earth Society uh, website and that kind of thing, it seems basically indistinguishable to me between some, like a Mark Sargent video or one of your videos or an well, Eric Dubay video. The Flat Earth Society. Um, I don't, you know, since I'm not a part of it, I can't quote you their exact beliefs. Sure. But they believe that the earth is rising up that creates gravity okay. and a bunch of other stuff that nobody who's involved in modern day flat earth, such as myself and many, many others believe. Um, it, 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 I know to the lay person it sounds like, well, it's just two different sides of the same kooky coin. Right. But the Flat Earth Society, for your readership, is not part of modern day flat earth. It's, uh, it's there. It exists. 
but none of us are involved with it. Okay. They're not involved in scientific experimentation and exploration like those who are involved in the flat earth that I know and love are. Okay. Fair and they're not involved in any of our events. They are not involved in any of our videos. It's not because we keep them out. They just don't almost exist. Mm -hmm. They could easily have had a representative of the Flat Earth Society at the uh, FEIC, the Flat Earth International Conference 2017 that was just held in Raleigh, North Carolina, November 27, 2017, but they were not there. Why were they not there if they are the people who are, you know, uh, hoisting the flag for Flat Earth? Right. Huh. They could have, anybody could have gone, anyone, pro or con, they right. were not there. <laughs> Okay, well, that's that's good to know. I really didn't... Uh, I got a sense of that from one of uh, Eric Dubay's videos, but uh, I was planning on going back and watching that again just to make sure. Well, a few people have joined the Flat Earth Society totally in an innocent fashion right. when they first stumbled into Flat Earth and found out, oh, wow, this is so interesting. Oh, wait, there's this thing called the Flat Earth Society, and you can right away and get a membership. Yeah. Um, and they joined it, and then later they realized, oh, my gosh, that's just a bunch of hokum and they, they still kept <laughs> membership card at, you know as a sort of souvenir or novelty right. purposes uh but it's not because they believe in anything that the people there are involved with okay <laughs> that's interesting um whew. so um okay so um you, how about how long ago did you did this happen the transition from other conspiracy theories to the flatter thing for you March of 2015, I remember it well. Uh, that's when I came into the Flat Earth Clues, or not came into them, but found them and started watching them. And after I watched those by Mark Sargent, I started watching videos by everybody, including Eric Dubay and many other people. Jaron of the channel Jaronism, and then you know later Globe Busters with a guy named Bob Nodell, um, and so many other people. D I T R H, which stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Uh, so many great video content providers. YouTube is not just a, you know, a joke. It is really the largest library of information the world has ever known. People say, what do you do your research on YouTube? Ha ha ha. Well, these days people don't get in their car and drive to a library for the most part. Some people right. have that lifestyle where they even walk to the library. Mm -hmm. But these days you can find out a lot of information on YouTube and a lot of junk too. You have to really use your naturally uh, natural born discernment and i think everyone has that it's innate i think uh, media and all of the suggestions all of these suggestions that come our way in the form of commercials etc uh can take away your discernment and kind of almost brainwash you into believing things that aren't true but yeah uh youtube research and that is what you know led me to all of these other flat earth content providers and lots of videos with experimentation about water not sticking to a ball and water always remaining flat and level when it's at rest not when you're pouring water from a drinking glass into your sink obviously it's not motionless and flat then mm -hmm. but when it's at rest it always is look at any lake any stream forget about the waterfall part but look where it is it's flat you can almost use it you can use it as a level look at a spirit level water's inside it and it's flat and it's used to create many things and it's been it's an ancient real an ancient technique so um, water is uh, water's flat. And what, that's one of the things about flat earth. It's a lot about common sense realities. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously, I would dispute that. <laughs> okay, but, well, of course, but, I, you know, so would many people. Yeah. But um, we, I, I'm speaking as we as human beings, or at least people in the West, tend to believe in things that that are, in my opinion a bit on the nut side, if you were to tell it to somebody who just, you know, let's pretend there's creatures from outer space, beam down here. Some of the things that we believe are kind of crazy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And <laughs> so flat earth, I mean, is not any crazier than some of the other things that were taught in school. Like, um, let's look at something like evolution. We're all taught evolution in school. Mm -hmm. And we are taught that we are descended from monkeys. If monkeys evolved into humans over millions and millions of years, why are there still monkeys? I know that's, that's kind of a common creationist uh, trope, but we didn't evolve from modern monkeys. It's the, the thing is, modern humans and modern monkeys share an ancient ancestor. 
Mm, some would say, and some would say that's <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> so it's one of those things where if a person who wasn't from our world came down and, be- and saw some of the things listed that we commonly believe mm-hmm. like that, they might say, well, that sounds just as ridiculous as, as water is, uh, is always level. Maybe. But um, what, what's, the alter- on- what's the alternative to evolution? Uh, creation, but not in the sense of <laughs> the things I think now and say now are something that me three years ago would look at and say, I'd never say any of those things. Mm-hmm. I am not a Christian. I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have crosses around my house. I don't go to church and I don't pray to Jesus. I haven't accepted Jesus in my heart or soul or uh, born again, none of those things Mm. at all. It's not how I grew grew up and it's not how I am now. And I'm adding to that, I don't think it's wrong if anybody does do those things. But I'm just telling you from my perspective that a lot of flat earthers are not Christian. Some are. Some are Muslim. Some are Buddhist. Some are agnostic. There are a few atheists. Um... But we all have a thing in common, which is we believe the flat plane we live on was created and not a function of a Big Bang where nothing exploded in the blackness of space and became everything eventually that we see here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it it doesn't I mean, it sounds like a simpler thing. The idea of creation versus a Big Bang and billions of years in evolution but it really just pushes the question back. Uh, where did the flat earth come from? Where did the dome come from? Or the, or the uh, firmament? All, all created. All created. By. For us. For, for us, we are the creation, and the creator is the one who created it. Now, by creator, I don't know who that is. Okay. I really don't. Some people believe they have a personal relationship with God, and they'll say it just like that. Mm-hmm. I don't have that sort of relationship with God. I actually hesitate to use the word God, but I don't discount God either. I feel very special. I think all of us are very special and that we are not an accident because of an explosion. Mm -hmm. When you look around and see your pets, your children, your friends, the beauty of nature, you, you've you got to see that this didn't just randomly happen and all of the complex thoughts and feelings that we have. Even this conversation and the technology that we're using isn't all just because nothing blew up one day and became everything we see and hear. I just don't buy it. Yeah, I, on the other side, you know, you're not going to agree with this. The technology we're using now is was developed by, you know, the Department of Defense <laughs> to begin well, with. Well, yeah, but that's people. That's humans that were created. Right. Whether or not they use their powers for good or bad. I mean, you know, I'm not even saying the Department of Defense is bad per se. Uh, I'm just saying that anything, any technology we have is because we were created, mm-hmm. not because we evolved from certain monkeys to the intellect level that we have today. That's my opinion, and I know yours differs. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, me too. I I mean, I'm completely fascinated by this, frankly, is why I'm writing about it. Well, Uh, I think that flat earth is something that is worth looking into. A lot of people will just laugh because it's so crazy. After all, we've, you know, we've we've been to the stars. Uh, But I don't know where you'd find proof of that unless you want to go NASA pictures. Or my uncle's brother's friend built parts that went on the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. But does that prove there was a space shuttle and that there's space? I don't know. But here's the thing. Where where, where are you right now? I'm in Houston, Texas, pretty close to NASA. Okay, but I mean, I don't know if Houston exists. Very true, unless you've been there. Yeah. Right. But I mean, uh, kind of a little bit different because you and I could go to Houston or wherever it is you are. Sure. You and I can't go to space. We can't go to the moon. A very small handful of people supposedly went to the moon. There are many astronauts who never do anything other than things here on Earth. We, know, we all know that. Mm-hmm. Only a small percentage of them supposedly ever you know, 
went into the blackness of space. Right. But we can go everywhere here. You and I could go on a trip tomorrow together and meet up somewhere. We can't go to the South Pole, though, apparently. Well, you can go to Antarctica, mm-hmm. and you can, you, know, you can book a trip, cost a bit of money, bring some warm clothes, <laughs> and you'll have a guided tour. You'll get to see all sorts of wonderful, beautiful, and fascinating things, but you can't... <clears throat> You can't man an exploration with snow cats and tons of food and supplies and go anywhere you want to go uh, unmolested. Right. It's just not allowed. Hmm. Okay. And I'm not sure if the secrets to all of this, as many flat earthers believe, is in Antarctica. I don't say that it is. It could potentially be. I focus on more on my show. I have a YouTube channel called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Mm -hmm. And it can also be found simply by putting my name, Patricia Steer, into YouTube. I I focus more on the people, the flat earthers, kind of similar to what you're doing now, but from a flat earther to flat earther perspective. I interview uh, YouTube content providers, people who found Flat Earth the same as me, and find out what makes them tick, what kind of people they are, where they come from, what are their religious beliefs or lack of religious beliefs, what does their family think about it, have they been able to uh, make any headway with their family in explaining this to them, or are they... You know, you know, not speaking with a family member at this moment due to this. Has it affected their job? How does it affect the way that they deal with daily life and watching movies? Do they still watch sci-fi? Many, many questions come to mind when I find out, when I found out there were other people looking into Flat Earth aside from myself. I wanted to know who these people are. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I started my channel. Those are all really great questions, and I'm going to bounce them right back at you. <laughs> How is this affected? Do you have any, uh, you know, friction in your life because of this, family or friends or anything? Well, both of my parents are dead. Uh, the last Sorry. one to go, my mother in 2014. So neither of them had the opportunity or curse to have me <laughs> bring it up at a Thanksgiving dinner that the earth is flat. I don't know how that would have gone down. Probably not too well. But you never know. Yeah. They were very intelligent people, open-minded. But, you know, flat earth is the open-minded test because you bring that up to anybody and you'll see how they react. Many people react literally violently. All of a sure, sudden, sure. a super calm, nice person sounds like they've got instant Tourette's and every other word is profanity. <laughs> They'll hang up on you, run away from you, and never talk to you again. Call you crazy, call you a moron. Other people will say, interesting, tell me more. So it is really about open-mindedness. If any idea is brought to you, and any of us laugh it down without first looking into it, that is, uh, that's ridiculous. It's condemnation without investigation. So we've all heard the quote about that. Um hell was I just thinking? Okay. Um, excuse me, I completely lost my train of thought, and I cannot read my notes. <laughs> okay, well, so uh, before I forget, uh, what, what do you do for a living? Uh, well, I used to own a clothing store, a women's boutique clothing store in New Orleans, Louisiana, and prior to that, I was a radio DJ at small market radio stations in Michigan and oh, California. That makes and a lot of Louisiana. sense. You have a great well, voice. Thank you. I felt comfortable when I found out about Flat Earth in 2015, starting a YouTube channel, because I thought what I could do was similar to what I did as a DJ, and I was a talk show host for a brief moment in time, just talking to people about themselves. That was a natural for me. In 2015, when I found out about Flat Earth, I first was appalled and a bit angry that I'd been lied to about this fundamental issue of where I live. Mm -hmm. And my family had been lied to and everybody I know. And then I decided I can't just sit by and say, oh, that's interesting. Please pass the peanuts. I had to do something. So I was taking a shower one day. And that's where I get a lot of my best ideas. Sure. And in the steam in the warm water with the, you know, vanilla shampoo in my hair, it was you could find out about these people you've been listening to. You could ask them. And then I thought, well, why would they agree to talk to me? I don't even have a channel. They don't know who I am. And I thought, again, well, why not try? So I started a channel, started contacting people whose videos that I'd liked. And uh, lo and behold, 
almost everybody said yes. And so my channel was created pretty much in order to connect with other flat earthers and see what makes them tick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's funny is more of a, I don't know if I exactly have a question as a more of a statement, but uh, it's funny you mentioned, you know, people, the first time you talk to them about flat earth and they start swearing like mad, they go crazy, they're not open-minded, they think you're just an idiot. There's a, there's a lot of that thrown around the internet. Anyone who even uh, dips their toe into the flat earth uh, doctrine kind of gets mocked mercilessly for being an idiot. And, and that's just kind of the truth for whenever anyone disagrees with anyone else on the internet. That's kind of par for the course. But sometimes it's true. But what I found uh, talking to the, the flat earth people I, I've spoken with is they're all very intelligent. And I think that's... Uh, counterintuitive to a lot of people they they, they just expect um some kind of dullard you know who doesn't yeah. doesn't understand what globes are or doesn't understand the concept <laughs> of gravity etc or uh have you ever ridden on a plane i hear that right. one a lot yes right. i've traveled all over the world but yes i've never seen the curve out of an airplane window although i can see how people do see it people are very suggestible look how magic tricks work Sure. You know, we believe we see elephants disappear, but, you know, they really didn't disappear. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a th the psychology of, uh, you know, so-called uh, conspiracy theories is, you know, it's not it's not a lack of intelligence. It's maybe just a misdirected intelligence. You know, this is in terms of uh, scientists who's, who've studied it. It's more like uh, connecting dots that aren't there. You know what I mean? Well, Do you, you know the phrase pareidolia? We feel those dots are there, though. But I understand what you're saying. Right. That we might be connecting dots that aren't there. Do you know the, uh, the phrase pareidolia? Hmm, no. It's a, it's a cool phrase. It's uh, when you see faces or uh, animals in the clouds or oh. faces in wood grain. So we're evolutionarily primed to, um, especially with... Uh, thing uh, especially in terms of agency to ascribe agency to things which do not possess agency so we, we look at wood grain we'll see a face in there we'll look at a cloud and see a bunny we'll, we'll see a, a bush moving near us and maybe jump because there might be an animal in it and so there's a lot of in terms of people who study conspiracy theorists there's a lot of uh, false positives they call it well we are programmed to uh, recognize patterns it's part of absolutely. survival absolutely I understand that. But when it comes to flat earth, we're not, it's not akin to, you know, seeing a, a bunny rabbit in the sky. Uh, we, we see people who are supposedly on the International Space Station doing somersaults with harnesses attached to their waist. We see them with our eyes. We don't make it up. It's there. Why is it there? Um, so many, many other such things. Uh, it would be easy for anybody to go look at this themselves. They can look at... Um, International Space Station hoax on YouTube and come up with all sorts of videos that are actually showing real footage on the International Space Station and the spacewalks outside of the International Space Station. These are real ones that NASA has provided the footage for, not that some flat earth are made up in their basement covered with, with windows covered in tinfoil, uh, of the uh, astronauts on a spacewalk in the uh, blackness of space um, out there, you know, in their space suits where there's bubbles. Air right, bubbles. Right. So why would there be air bubbles in space? Yeah, I've seen I've seen those videos, and uh, I cannot definitively say whether well, the, the the bits of light going across the screen are bubbles or not. But well, they look does, like bubbles, and they does, act like bubbles. Sure. But uh, we were told by one of the astronauts who was uh, <laughs> somebody went to one of the speeches that uh, uh, Scott Kelly did uh, recently in 2017, and question from the audience about the bubbles in space and Scott Qualley kind of fumbled and said it's paint flecks coming off the ISS. Mm -hmm. Now if you look into how long the ISS has been up there we don't have any video of it ever being assembled in space. We have right. videos of everything being assembled including the sandwich I made earlier today. We <laughs> keep video records of everything as a society now we know that. Mm -hmm. So that ISS if they put it up there and painted it before I guess they put it up there, it's had plenty of years for uh, paint flecks to fly off it, if that were indeed true. 
And we have tons of videos of the bubbles in space and even some videos with flippers on a dark shadowy person behind. And it's not a bunny in space. They're actual real flippers. You can zoom in and see. And, uh, and, and, and oxygen tanks. Mm -hmm. And what are those doing? What are those doing in space? Well, Unless space is water, which it very well might be. But those particular pictures that we get from NASA and the spacewalks, um, that stuff is probably filmed in an underwater pool somewhere, not in space. Mm -hmm. The spacewalks outside. And when it comes to the International Space Station inside, small little studio, and uh, they might use some of those parabolic planes who uh, fly up and then go down, up and down, up and down, kind of like the letter M over and over again. And there's a part of time where there is no gravity and you kind of uh, fly around a little bit. Yeah, the vomit comet, they call it. Yeah, vomit yeah. comet, exactly. <laughs> I've so. always wanted to do that. Okay, um, so... Uh, again, this is this is not mine, but uh, this is an idea of uh, people who have studied this uh, conspiracy theories and people who believe in them. Um, they're they're essential to the belief in a lot of conspiracy theories is kind of the idea of a boogeyman. Mm -hmm. So you got NASA lying to you, who's and NASA is possibly controlled by Freemasons. I, I don't know. What's your take well, on all that? Well, I don't like to pin it on a certain group. Because okay. if you pin it on a certain group, there's other groups that could be responsible. I pin it on bad people who want power. Some say it's Freemasons. Some say Jesuits. Some say Zionists. I mean, we could go on and on and on about who it is that is to blame for this. But really, who's to blame? You and I and our parents before us and their parents and all of the school teachers. Did they do it to us on purpose? No. They were just repeating what they had been taught. Who put this into place? Who got the, quote, ball rolling long, <laughs> long ago? I can't tell you specifically and point the finger, although some flat earthers do have a boogeyman in mind. Um, I just think it's a, it's a cumulative effect of people who wanted power and control, found out the truth about the nature of our world, hid it from us in order to keep the uh, resources, the power and the money theirs, and to keep the people, us, the little ants, um, amused and uh, controlled. And then they have power over us, and we will continue to work for them because after all we're the people who make their shoes who make their food who make their roads uh we are the ants for the elites all of us hmm. are they uh, would these be the same bad people behind 9-11 and the boston bombing and sandy hook um yes but on a larger level yes um it's not a you know a a, a big you know burled walnut conference table in a right. dark room with men in yeah. expensive Armani suits smoking cigars and talking <laughs> in hushed tones. Right. But in essence, it's kind of something like that with some women thrown into. Let's not just blame the men. There are people who are in power from very, very wealthy, age old families who do control a lot of what's going on in our world. And even if you are a full believer that everything that we're told in the news is correct, you have to admit that there are people who are controlling things, who've got money. Sure. The people without money are not controlling anything. They can barely get anything to eat. Right. So it's the people who've got the money who have the power. And we're living in this system where absolute power corrupts absolutely. And if they're going to hide a big secret from you, uh, they're going to do it for the reason of maintaining control. I mean, we start out young with people who have more power than us lying to us. They're called our parents mm -hmm. who tell us that if we don't go to sleep, something, you know, whatever you won't, something bad will happen in the morning. Or, uh, if you don't, if you're not good, Santa Claus won't give you a gift. And we're, we're told these things in order to control us. And maybe Santa Claus is also told so that we get a lovely surprise on Christmas morning. But we are lied to by people. You can't deny it. Your boss might lie to you why he or she is doing a certain thing. And then later it's revealed why they did it. It's because the company is going to get sold. And right. they needed to cut down on expenses by firing your best friend. But at the time, they told you, well, your friend had been made redundant. But the real reason was something else. And it's really a big chess game going on.
And we don't know exactly why, but it really all comes down to power and control, in my opinion. Okay. Um, maybe uh, we could um... – what about politics? Where, where do you fall politically? What do you think of Trump? What do you think of the world or the country right now? I don't follow politics. I have voted one time in my life, mm. and I voted for Al Gore for president. Okay. So go back and see when that happened, and you'll know the last time <laughs> I voted, uh, the last time I believed that I could have some control over something by casting a vote, and you can see where I was uh, there are a lot of flat earthers who might fall a little bit more toward the Republican side. I don't really think a lot of flat earthers vote at all. I think most of us have stepped away from the system as much as possible. Yeah, that's. I think that's accurate. From everything, uh, from everyone I've talked about, it seems to be uh, part and parcel of this delusion uh, in not only politics but kind of the systems of control and propaganda. Yeah, which you might. We're, we're, we're you might disillusioned call it. with the system. And we've opted out. We don't, I mean, there's things we've got to do. Many of us, but not all of us, pay taxes and we do, the, you know, get a driver's license. But some, some flat earthers and some non-flat earthers have opted out of that too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a very few of us who've been able to get off the grid completely flat earther or non-flat earther and grow our own food and have our own well water and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But most of us live in in towns, in cities where we rely upon others and government services and someone's got to keep those street lights on and et cetera. So, yeah, we we are, most of us anyway, out of the system of voting because we believe it doesn't do anything, that politicians are selected, not elected. So I don't vote anymore and I don't really care who's in the office, which which guy in a suit or I guess, you know, almost a woman this year is in a suit who's, you know, the figurehead. They're not really making the decisions. Somebody way above them is. And do I know who that person's name or those people's names are? No, I do not. I don't know what group they belong to either. But I do know that at the top of all of this, aside from what I said earlier, that it's all about control and power, I believe they're hiding the nature of who we are. And some would call it hiding God. And if you don't like the word God, and many don't, I know I never did before all this came to light for me with Flat Earth and being created, not, you know, a victim of a big bang. Uh, you can use the word the creator or you know, whatever it is. They're hiding who we are. And really, actually, the ultimate magic and beauty of who we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, you've given me a lot of information, uh, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for talking to me. And um, just being in Hustler Magazine, I can't ever say is a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> but in my opinion, even if I'm not a Hustler fan, um, I'm not against the beautiful female form or nudity and women who are willing to take their clothes off to be paid, and some are doing it for free, I know, uh, who, are, who are of legal age, it is their right to do so. And it's someone's right to sell a magazine with their images in it if they, if they say that they want to have their images in there. Some people who are against it don't have to read it so, right, right. or look at it, <laughs> as the case may be. So I guess I don't really have anything against it. Uh, on the surface, some people feel those sorts of things create violence toward women. I think that people create violence toward women and violence toward men. And, you know, you can't blame a magazine for that. Well, amen. On that note, Patricia Steer, thank you so much. Ian Murphy, thank yep. you so much, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it looks like this recorded all the way through, so I'll, I will send you uh, an audio file as soon as I can.